Man, your potatoes have gotten tall, Paul. I want you to look how tall these. They're almost chest high. Look. Well, that was some good fertilizer. That's some good potatoes, isn't it? Well, come on. Let's get out of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look how tall they are. <laughs> they are looking good. Oh, they're blooming. The potatoes are blooming. Taters. Cooking, they're thin enough that they're cooking pretty quick, which is a good sign. First thing you want is, I've got, uh, I think it was just about two pounds of potatoes. You can do three pounds, just whatever, because you may be making it for uh, a big group of people so you can just double the recipe but this is going to be plenty for me mr brown and i really i really love potato salad but my favorite potato salad is just a good old-fashioned potato salad uh, there's a lot of different ingredients you can add to potato salad but i just like the old-fashioned kind so first time we go we got our boiled potatoes Got them diced up. Now, if you want to, you can mash them. A lot of people like the their potato salads uh, creamy, mashed up. I'm just going to take a little salt, not too much. Salt my potatoes. Some um, I started steaming my potatoes. But these were fresh out of the garden, and uh, I just boiled them. And you can leave the skins on, too. And I come really close to leaving the skins on, but I just washed them good and, and peeled them. So, any way you want to do it. Okay, we got salt and pepper on potatoes. Now, if you want to put a little bit of garlic or something like that, that's fine. But like I said, I like mine just plain Jane, old-fashioned. I'm going to put just a little bit of paprika. Now, we're just going to start adding stuff in there. And I've got a half of a diced onion. And you can use a red onion. Uh, I, I was going to go out and pull up a red onion out of the garden. And I decided I'd just use what I had in here. It's got, I've got a, a half of a diced um, sweet onion. I've got, oh, probably about a half of a cup of diced bell pepper. Now, this is red and orange. You can use green, whichever you like. I've got some uh, young tender celery that I had in the garden. And this stuff is so good when it's young like this. And I just chopped it up. And I'm going to use uh, leaf and all. It gives it a pretty color. It gives it a pretty taste. I just love it. I love celery in my chicken salad. I just really, I really like celery. Okay, now we're going to put whatever your choice of relish is. And if you don't have relish, you can just cut you up some pickles. You can use sweet or you can use dill. I'm going to use sweet today, but I like either one. And I'm going to put two big heaping tablespoons, just like that. I'm going to put, so most of the time I just eyeball this, so I'm trying to give you all a recipe. I think I'm going to start with a cup of mayonnaise, and I'm going to go from there. Some people might like their potato salad a little bit drier. Some people may like it uh, pretty moist like we do. But we're going to do a cup. Then I'm going to put just plain old regular mustard in here. And I'm going to put probably a good tablespoon. Just like that. Then I'm just going to cut up some boiled eggs. 
and it's about that simple. It's just your good old-fashioned potato salad. And since this week coming up weekend is Memorial Day weekend, there's going to be a lot of cookouts. Going to be making potato salad, baked beans, and stuff like that. You can put as many boiled eggs as you want in there, and you don't have to put any if you don't like boiled eggs. Some people put a little bit of sour cream in their potato salad. Some people put bacon. But we're just going for the, the basic potato salad here. Now, I will be adding a little bit more pepper. I don't think I'm going to add any more salt until I taste it. So now we're just going to start up and see where we're at. And the reason I like using red and yellow and orange bell peppers because it makes your dish look prettier. But too, I like the taste of it better than I do green. Some people don't know that they taste different, but your red and your orange and your yellow are a little bit sweeter bell pepper than your green. So it looks like my potato salad is going to be pretty moist. If you like a really mustardy tasting potato salad, you can put more mustard in it. But I know that I've always, always got to add more pepper. And then I'm going to taste it for salt. Or Mr. Brown can come taste it. He knows I like stuff a little bit saltier than he does. It's because of my dentures, I guess I can't taste all that salt. Get him some potato and egg here. Does it need more pepper or salt? A little bit of salt, more pepper. More pepper. A little bit of salt. Is that enough? That'll do it. Okay. You can always salt it to your taste. Yeah, you can always put more salt in it. So this is your just your basic old-fashioned taste salad. Also, what I like to do to kind of pretty it up, if you're taking it somewhere, we're not taking this anywhere, we're going to be eating it, but um, let me get a paper towel real quick. Kind of clean the sides off here. Put you a little bit of paprika on top. Just sprinkle it on. This is when I make deviled eggs, I put a little bit of paprika on top of my deviled eggs too. And then if you got an extra boiled egg, just put your boiled egg on top, just cut up a few pieces. Just for presentation. That just kind of tells them that there's boiled egg in here. And that is your old-fashioned, everyday, taste salad. Very easy to put together. And longer it sits in the refrigerator, better it gets. So, um, I'm going to make some baked beans. They're going to be easy to throw together. Hopefully, it's everything that you have in your pantry. I'm going to do it on top of the stove. won't be put in the oven. And uh, we'll be ready for our cookout. I love cooking outside and I've had my this is my little lodge cast iron grill me and Danny love this little thing it's just the right size 
for me and him. And you can take, you can load this thing up in the truck and you can take it anywhere with you. And it just don't take up much room. But um, I've had the, the coals lit for probably about 30 minutes and they're good and hot, but the fire's not real blazing hot. So that's what you need when you're cooking some thin pork chops on here. And after marinating them, I just uh, took them out of the marinade and I discarded the marinade. And I just sprinkled a little bit of uh, pepper. I didn't put no more salt on it. Uh, a little bit of garlic and a little bit of paprika. And that's all I'm gonna put on here. We're gonna put them on the grill. Now since these are a thin cut, it won't take them very long to cook. But you want them done through and through. This is my little large grill, and you can tell it sits out here under the shed, but it'll get rusted up. We try to keep the cooking top, you know, we clean it and oil it up just like you would a cast iron skillet. And uh, we need to to, uh, to do something with the bottom part, too. It draws a lot of moisture out here, even under the shed, but it don't keep it from cooking good, that's for sure. make a little bit of a brine for our pork chops and what I've got here is I've got five thin cut pork chops and you don't you can have them thicker cut it don't matter just however you like them and I'm, I'm just gonna make a simple brine I'm gonna move y'all over here just a little bit I'm gonna put a half a cup of water and I'm gonna put about a fourth of a cup of so low sodium soy sauce. Then I'm going to put uh, about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now the only other thing you need for this brine, you can put your little bit of brown sugar in there if you want to. I'm not going to put any brown sugar. Uh, it's lemon pepper. You want about a teaspoon of lemon pepper in here in your brine. Uh, what I'm going to use is my, uh, this is my, my infused uh, sea salt. And it was infused with, if, I'll put the link below, but it was infused with orange juice, orange rind, thyme, and rosemary, and then sea salt. And that's what I've got in here. And I'm going to put a teaspoon of this instead of uh, lemon pepper. But if you got lemon pepper, that's what you need to put in here. I know some of y'all did make some of this uh, infused sea salt. And you know a little goes a long way. So I'm just going to put a good teaspoon. And then I'm just going to put my pork chops in here and I'm going to cover them up. Um, it's best to put it in like a gallon size bag, but I went to the drawer and I'm out. So, I'm going to move these around and then I'm going to put some plastic wrap over the top. And then every once in a while I'll go in there and kindly uh, switch them around so that all that pork gets that, that good marinade in there. And we'll let this marinade up till we uh, decide to go ahead and... and uh, cook our pork chops probably a couple hours now I can see on the it's starting to get um, opaque looking around the edges so I'm gonna go ahead and turn them and get a hold of it oh that looks good got a good scald on them So you can see they're cooking up pretty good. Just like I said, you don't want to overcook them. Some people uh, want to overcook pork, but something that's saying it don't take that long. Okay, let's start our baked beans. Go with our potato salad. Now I've got my iron skillet heating up here, and I'm going to take me just a little bit of bacon, render it out. 
You can put as much bacon as you want in there. Make it as meaty as you want. I'm just going to be making a pint jar of, of my navy beans. So we're going to put about that much bacon in there. We're going to let that render out, let it get brown. Then we'll come back and we'll put the rest of the ingredients in. And we're going to be cooking our, our baked beans. It's stovetop baked beans. This is how you would cook them too if you was out in a campfire and just cooking them on top of a fire. Real easy recipe, but really good. Okay, we got our bacon rendered down real good. I'm going to put me just a little bit more of my bacon grease in here that I save up. Because I'm going to put some onions and some bell peppers. Let them saute. Now, a lot of these uh, recipes, these barbecue recipes, you can add so many different things to them, just to your taste. You could add some jalapenos to this. Um, you could add uh, Polish sausage, some kielbasa. You could add, um, let's see, you could add some hamburger meat to it. I've had it with uh, hamburger meat and Polish sausage in it, and it's, it makes a meal for itself. But we're just wanting plain old Jano. Uh, barbecue beans. If you hear something running, it's my dehydrator. I apologize, but there's always something going on here. If it's quiet on the homestead, it means everybody's taking a nap. <laughs> and it ain't quiet. So I've got a half an onion, probably half a bell pepper. And we're just going to saute this up so the onions and the bell peppers are a little bit tender. Then we'll come back and we'll put the rest in. Boy, it smells good in here. Our bell peppers and onions are getting tender. So what I'm going to add now is my navy beans. And I'm just using a pint of my navy beans that I canned up. Okay, I've got a third of a cup of brown sugar, I've got a fourth of a cup of molasses, and this is what's going to make your brown, your baked beans so good. I'm going to put just a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of just regular mustard. And I'm going to put about, about that much. Uh, let's see. I think that was about a half a cup. I'm going to stir it up and see where I'm at. Yeah, a half a cup of ketchup is pretty good. Now I'm going to put some Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire sauce or, or however you say it. And I'm sure people are going to be telling me. I'm going to put me just a teaspoon. Now... I'm putting this in place of apple cider vinegar, but you can put apple cider vinegar in it. Just put you a teaspoon. Either one will work. It'll give it that kind of vinegary uh, tart taste. So what I'm going to do, because y'all know Miss Lori and y'all know that I'm going to taste it to make sure I've got enough in there of what I need. Yum. It's delicious. 
And that Worcestershire sauce, it just really gives it a bite. That's why I like putting it in there. So that's good, good stuff. Like I said, you can double this recipe. I'll put the recipe of everything down in the uh, description box. So that's how easy and how fast that come together. You're going to let it cook on top of the stove. Uh, I'll let it simmer probably only about 15-20 minutes. I'll keep an eye on it. Now, if you want to, you can stick it in the oven, 350 oven for 15-20 uh, minutes, whichever. Because all you really got to do is just cook it through. Just warm it up and cook it through. It won't take very long. But if you have a double recipe, it might take about 30 minutes. So there we go. <laughs> New sub. Was that a monkey? That's an Indian hen. <laughs> Okay. Woodpecker. Four on all, we ain't got no <laughs> monkey there. Anyway, what was you saying? That's a pileated woodpecker. I, we call them Indian hen. Big, big bird, big wood, big woodpecker. They're about a foot long. What was I talking about? what I said. What are you talking about? Our, a, new, a lot of new subscribers that are asking questions that a lot of our older subscribers know. So we're not going to try to bore our old one. You have to, you're going to have to bear with us. We're going to tell a, a few stories about how we met. Just a few, a few things that we can think of that's been asked lately. Uh, we met on the banks of Eleven Point River. Uh, I guess it was in uh, 78, somewhere in around 1978, maybe, might have been 77, huh? Somewhere in there, yeah. 77. In the summer, she had been, she'd come up from Texas to stay with her grandmother. And we had a community swimming hole down there, and uh, people from miles around come to that swimming hole. And I'm down there swimming, and family and friends, and she shows up with her grandmother, and I didn't expect. I, I talked to her and stuff that day. And I didn't expect to. I was 16. And I didn't expect, probably to, I didn't know that I'd ever see her again. And she had made the decision that she was going to stay up at, with her grandmother and start school instead of down there at Houston. And uh, when, on my first day of school, and there she was. And I've been in trouble ever since. And you've been in trouble, and you've been a pain in my <laughs> ear. No. But, um. There she was, and we've been together ever since, and that's been about 43 years or so now. Yeah. We'll be married 40 years, October the 24th, 2020, this fall. And I'll be 59 October the 31st, Halloween. Yeah, you're a spook, baby. And you'll be 32. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in January, right, right. January the 8th. Oh, you're right. January the 8th is her birthday. January, she was born the uh, same day as Elvis. Dad, he passed away. Um, has it been 10 years ago? Yeah, it's been 10. Ten years ago, his mama's still here with us. She's still doing good. 
She has a lot of. She just had a birthday a few weeks ago. She's 87. 87 years old. She's had some hip surgeries and knee surgeries. and She still gets out and about a little bit. Still gets outside and pillows a little bit. If y'all ever hear me talk about Preston, my little grandson, that's who. He's named after Danny's dad, Preston. That made me think of a story. You think I should tell a story? Yeah. Before we got talking about him. dad. There's no way that I can explain my dad. <laughs> one of a kind. He's one of a, he, They broke the mold when I made my dad. Hard working man all of his life. He's very loud. He's very loud. He, if he's around talking, he was loud, cutting up, going on. Half the time, people didn't know whether he was mad or just having fun. But this one time, he was having fun with me. The creek had been up. And we talked about these hogs. We, we had a big electric fence, a big pasture off with these hogs. We had an electric fence. And when the creek would get up, uh, brush and stuff would get on get on the fence and you have to go down and clean it off. So I'm I'm down there. He said, go down there and clean that brush off that fence in the creek. It's springtime, so I'm I'm barefooted and I go out there and uh, I holler at him. My house is pretty good ways up there and I holler and I ask him, I said, you got the fence off? Yeah. I reached down and grabbed that fence. I, now I'm standing in water barefooted. And I rushed down and grabbed that fence, and I picked it up, and I shook it about one time. When everything started coming off of it, he hadn't unplugged it. <laughs> Is that what happened on your hair? That's what happened on my hair. It <laughs> fried me. And I'm standing in that creek, and my because I done got a hold of it, and I can't my I can't get let go of it. My hands are just tightened up, and my arms are shaking like this right here because. I'm telling you, back then, and they have some bad fences now, too, but that fence was hot. Did he do that on purpose? Yeah, he done it on purpose. <laughs> and I'm sitting there in that water just shaking like this, trying to get, and I finally get it turned loose. Oh, I was so mad at him, but it wouldn't matter. Did it? <laughs> I just hollered at him. I said, turn that fence. And then I was scared. I could hear him laughing. I, I know he was just laughing at me. He had to be laughing. That wasn't funny. That, it was funny to him, though. And it's funny now that I think about it. <laughs> Even though my grandpa used to do me the same way. and lit you up, didn't it? It did. We used to take a piece of fescue stem, a green one, and test that electric fence. And you just start walking that stem down that fence real slow till you start to where you can feel it tingling or not. We didn't have no fence tester. Yeah, you did. I was the fence tester. <laughs> All that thing. We always, always cutting weeds and grass and weeds and that was our constant job, keeping them hogs in. I guess back then, I don't know anybody that didn't have hogs. Most people did. No, my grandpa. Here we are talking about getting some. <laughs> yeah. Look at that squirrel, hanging upside down trying to get in my garden. Squirrels are getting to be a pain. Yeah, it's any if, even any given morning, you can look out that front door and how many have we counted? Twelve. Yeah. And they are. They'll dig up my uh, plants. They dig up if I plant any kind of seed. I know they're gonna start getting my tomatoes. And your beans. My buns. beans. Yeah. So. So season opened the 15th. <laughs> so 
Well, I think it's about time to put squirrels in the freezer. We got one coming up here to us. I wish he'd get up here on camera. He's probably going to. He's right there on that tree. He's coming up here. He smells his beans. He wants some beans. I'm telling you. What's he doing? He's getting up there on the shed, running around. Does he not know we're here? He don't care. I wish that camera could turn around. He's right, he right behind us. He went around us, so. <laughs> That's how he went around us, huh? Mm-hmm. So, flies right here. Yeah, you better get to eat them. I can tell you one time, I'll tell you a story. We was in the store business. And I think you were still working for the county. I had three jobs then. Because you had come in and you took over and then I went home with the kids. Because when you got off work, you'd come to the store and take over. So I'd take the kids home, fix supper. And it was, I don't know, we had a Christmas tree. So it was probably later December. And it was a real Christmas tree. <laughs> I mean, the kids had went and cut that thing. Anyways, we brought it inside. And we kept smelling something, and it smelled like cat pee. <gasps> and uh, we discovered it was that tree. So we had to take that Christmas tree down and go get another one. Okay, we got that one up. Well, this was another afternoon that you were at the store. I mean, the kids got home. <clears throat> they plugged that tree in. I went to cooking supper. And something happened, and that tree started catching on fire. And I had to pull that thing out and throw it out the front door. <laughs> fire in a hole. Do you remember that time that, that's two times, if we hadn't been home, our house would have burnt. You remember that time that for no, there was no electrical wires. There was nothing in there. And that closet caught a fire. Yeah, I think you uh, said that that must have been a uh, mouse. I think it was a mouse with a match is what I think it was. <laughs> Seriously, because I don't know no other, there was no, nothing in there that would, you know, com like a, can of anything that would catch a fire or blow up or well i think you said that you had found some matches just loose matches in there so y'all was thinking that a mouse was probably i think a mouse was back when you could strike a match on about anything i think that mouse but we did have occasional mouse in the house and i i'm thinking that's what started that fire and luckily you was home we had trouble at the farm with mice because uh, we that we had the hallway floor was runt. One time we got home from a mouse, a rat, or something. They had figured out what well, was your nephew because you were gone on the truck. Had shoot a hole in the water line, and not downward squirt the ground, but upward squirt that floor, and it buckled that floor right in front of the washing machine. Yep. So that was one time that a mouse caused trouble. Hey, they're probably, probably wondering about your rat in the truck. My rat in the truck? That was Facebook, though. That was on Facebook. But you got only about 4,000 people on Facebook. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to put that scenario in this video. But... Anyway, I think Poison finally got the rat, but I had a rat in, under the hood of my truck chewed injector wire into that was a pain to fix but I got it fixed but uh, I kept trying to catch him in there I was going to shoot him with a BB gun and I seen him a couple times but I never got to shoot at him well I shot at him once when he was running but 
shot behind him, but I think I kept putting out poison, tying some poison in there with a piece of wire where he couldn't run off with it. And I, I haven't seen him, so I think I finally got him. That's good. He traveled all over that truck. He'd even been in the car, hadn't he? Well, that, up in the sun, yes. But uh, I've been talking and I ain't getting done eating and my pork chops are getting cold. Go ahead and eat. I'm getting beans all over my shirt. <laughs> I ain't got my bibs on, so I can't, I ain't collecting them in my pocket. We've been really busy. We've been uh, working on the, Dane's been working on the shed. I've been in the garden a lot. Um, I've been doing a lot of stuff inside. Yesterday, I had some time with my daughter, <clears throat> so I didn't get nothing done yesterday. Um, gardening and that shed's taking up a lot of time right now. But uh, we're still not sure when we'll be going back to work. There's no for sure timeline on that yet, is there? Not yet. So we're kind of waiting, hanging on that. I'll be going in some. So I guess if they have a, a lunch program up at school this summer, I'll be doing that. Staying busy with that. But it's fixing to be summer, I can tell. It's going to warm up next week. And not much rain, though, is there? Inside? Well, it's actually going to be cooler than they first predicted. Highs in the low 70s, 60 a day or two. Low humidity. So that means we got to get things done. We got to paint because of all the humidity is low. Yeah, I need to get that floor painted while the humidity is low before I get started on something else. That's for sure. So, anyways, if y'all go anywhere this weekend, y'all be careful. The different states, there's different rules. Not everybody's, you know, stuff's going to be open for people to do, but. I think Arkansas is starting to open up a little bit more every day, something. You know, it's next week they're opening up quite a bit. So, but we're staying home. We won't be going nowhere. Now, when that river clears up, we will be taking y'all fishing. That's a for sure and certain. <laughs> <laughs> what can you see? No deer? A heck of a day at sea, sir. <laughs> <laughs>